Hi, this is Mort Satin of the SALT Institute and I'm your SALT Guru. According to a recent Pew survey, the intellectual and technological triumphs of the space program tops the list of 20th century American achievements. Despite the fact that the average U.S. life expectancy rose by a staggering 57% during the century, medical breakthroughs were cited only by about 7% of the respondents. When categorizing its 10 greatest public health achievements of the 20th century, the CDC made sure to include safer and healthier foods. Yet the most significant accomplishment, one that not only contributed to vastly improved public health and longevity, but also to the national intellectual capacity that led to our space triumphs, that received virtually no coverage at all. Why does iodized salt, without question, the most effective dietary intervention of the 20th century, remain so far below our collective radar? Is it because that a tiny pinch of salt has been so effective that we simply take its benefits for granted and forget about it? If that is the case, then we had better reconsider its importance now. Although the effectiveness of iodine in treating goiter has been known since the 1820s, it was a full century before the proper management of this disease became a fact of life. During World War I, doctors in Michigan were shocked at the number of young draftees that had to be turned away from the military because of goiter. Goiter proved to be the largest single cause of medical disqualification for military service. In 1922, physicians in Michigan met to promote the addition of iodine to salt. Two years later, they presented a referendum to the Michigan State Medical Society asking it to endorse iodized salt. This was approved in March of 1924, and in the fall of 1924, the Morton Salt Company produced and marketed iodized table salt for countrywide consumption at no additional cost to the consumer. From that moment on, with a simple jiggle of the salt shaker, Americans dispatched the scourge of iodine deficiency diseases, goiter, cretinism, and hypothyroid coma into the dustbin of medical history. What was not known at the time was that the fourth and most devastating horseman of the iodine deficiency apocalypse was mental retardation. In the past, it was not uncommon for significant numbers of children in certain regions of the country to be considered dull or dim-witted without any connection made to iodine deficiency unless the condition was so severe as to be regarded as cretinism. However, within the last two decades, it has been demonstrated that where 5% or more of school-aged children have goiter, the average cognitive ability of the entire population is reduced by as much as 15 IQ points, a drop sufficient to move a child into the mildly retarded category. As the World Health Organization claims, one teaspoon of iodine is all a person requires during an entire lifetime. Yet iodine deficiency at critical stages of development in fetal life and early childhood remain the world's single most important and preventable cause of mental retardation. Motivated by this shocking information, many developing countries, encouraged and supported by the International Council for the Control of Iodine Deficiency Disorders, by UNICEF and several other agencies and organizations, including our SALT Institute, are moving ahead to promote national salt iodization programs around the world. China, poised to be the 21st century's economic and technological powerhouse, has given national salt iodization programs the highest priority, a sure sign that it intends its citizens to achieve their full intellectual potential in an increasingly competitive world. In the past 15 years, China increased its use of iodized salt from less than 20% up to 
up to 94% today. That's a wake-up call for us, because paradoxically, in the country that led the development of salt iodization, a cloud has descended over what was once considered to be an unassailable public health success. The National Health Nutrition Examination Surveys in the U.S. carried out over the last 30 years have shown a dramatic drop in urinary iodine. The median urinary iodine excretion in adults declined from 320 micrograms per liter in 1971 to 168 micrograms per liter in 2002. That's a major drop. More disturbing still, in pregnant women, the frequency of moderate iodine deficiency jumped from 1% in 1971 to 7% in 2002. Now, while the current levels are not quite low enough to declare a public health emergency, the trend is a matter of great concern. Well, what is responsible for this disturbing trend? During the past 30 years, we have witnessed the incredible success of the restaurant and food service sectors, reading more and more of our meals outside the home. With the decreasing number of meals consumed at home is the parallel decrease in urinary iodine. This makes sense because it's consumer table salt that's iodized. With very few exceptions, meals consumed out of the home are not made with iodized salt. The trend of consuming more and more meals out of the home will obviously continue for the foreseeable future. Although we're not there yet, it doesn't take a salt guru to see that we will soon approach a critical level that may result in the resurgence of iodine deficiency disorders along with all their negative consequences in this country. Now is the time to sit up and take notice of the incredible contribution that iodized salt has made to our national well-being. Before we cross that Rubicon and risk reintroducing the specter of iodine deficiency disorders, the restaurant and the food service industry must demand and use iodized salt so that the meals that we eat away from the home provide the same level of iodine as those they've displaced from within the home. It's iodized salt that allowed us to achieve our full mental and physical potential. If we're to maintain our intellectual ability to produce the stunning triumphs that resulted in our achievements in space exploration, our breakthroughs in medical and agricultural sciences, and all the other intellectual endeavors that we have been so successful at, then our food must be worth its salt. This is the Salt Guru saying bye-bye for now.